I'm Lainey, and I'm Laura Beth, and we are Steel Magnolias, two sisters who love family, traditions, and all things Southern. We've got plenty of room at our table, so pull up a chair. Hi, Laura Beth. Hi, Lainey. Happy first day of fall. <gasps> yes. Oh, man. It's finally here. And you know, I heard somebody mentioning just the other day, and I thought this was such a great tip. When it comes to turning our house over to fall, getting our decor out, getting all excited about everything pumpkin and orange <laughs> yes. and brown and all the beautiful warm colors, to not just think visually but to go through all of your senses and turn all of them over to fall so she was saying your candles well, your but even thinking a little bit outside of the box from that like she's like okay scent what what about baked apples on the stove you know with yes. some cinnamon on it like maybe you have Hot a candle cider. that you love but or whatever yeah um, going with taste, like going ahead and starting in your meal planning, some chili and, uh -huh. you know, those sorts of warm um, foods, going with warm lighting. I want to make that chai um, old fashioned again. Remember that? Yes. Last fall? Yeah. Ooh, that was good. Yeah. So I just thought that mm -hmm. was interesting to go kind of through the sensors of your home and you can refresh a lot even outside of just a pumpkin yes. on your front porch or in your centerpiece. So That's brilliant. Anyway, excited to do some meal planning. Do that some meal planning, chili. and yeah, just I love get this some weather. Cooler weather. It probably won't feel like fall in the south till October, though. Yeah, that's We're, true. But our mornings right now and early evenings are feeling just so pleasant. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Well, we have an episode for y'all today. Special guest. First of all, kudos to Laura Beth for reaching out because this was all on her in the reach out. Well, I just threw a Hail Mary and thought, ask, you have not because you ask not, right? That's so. right. Well, we are going to talk today with Jenna Bush Hager. Mm -hmm. um, many of you all know her as the former first daughter and granddaughter of our country. Um, she's a best-selling author. We've mentioned on here before another book she co-wrote with her twin sister called Sisters First. Yes. So cute. Loved that book. Um, she's the co-anchor of the Today Show, but she wears many hats. She she's does. a wife. She's a mom of three children. Um, and I think she's really joyful in each of those roles. For sure. Um, but... Her latest book is called Everything Beautiful in Its Time, which comes from a scripture in Ecclesiastes. Um, and the subtitle says Seasons of Love and Loss. So Jenna lost three of her four grandparents within 13 months. And she um, wanted to write this book and talk about her grief and many of the stories and legacy that yeah. she has yes. from them yes so um i just so excited we got to sit with her and it was so much fun y'all she was literally zooming with us live from her dressing room at the today show yes <laughs> so surreal so anyhow without further ado let's jump in with jenna bush hager jenna it is such a privilege to have you on the show today thank you for being here with us oh uh, well thank y'all for having me so we, um, we have a Southern bond, obviously, you being a, a Texan girl, and we came across your book, and gosh, we have so much in common. It almost feels unfair that we know so much about you and your family, <laughs> and you don't know much about us, but we'll, um, where appropriate, we might connect some dots today, um, just from the way that you're upbringing um, aside from the White House years, has been so similar to ours. We first learned about you and your beautiful sister through Sisters First. I actually read the book just this year. Um, mm -hmm. This is my reading stack here of books that I've completed this year, um, which I'm really proud of. Reading um, has to be made a priority, right? Yes. And so, um, gosh, there was just so many lines even in that book that I was like, did I live through the exact same era as Jenna and Barbara? And we feel like such close in age. And sure enough, I did look it up. We're about a month apart in age. Oh, wow. So it's funny <laughs> to even read some of your stories. Um, 
But we are here to talk about Jenna's new book, Everything Beautiful in Its Time. It's a personal collection of stories focusing on your family, specifically the three grandparents um, that you lost in the duration of just about a 13 month period. And so I will say from a personal standpoint for Lainey and I, for not having the opportunity to know our two grand grandfathers, this book really blessed us. Um, oh, thank you. You're, you're a really personal writer and I love the inclusion of letters in the book. Mm -hmm. Um, that is just so intimate for you to include. So I'm very thankful for all the, just the tender moments that you were able to do. Lainey is definitely a letter writer. She wrote letters to me when she was in college and then when I was in college and then from travels. And so I'd love for you just to talk a bit about just letter writing and some of the impact that that's had on you. Mm hmm. Well, my um, thank you all so much for having me. My grandparents on both sides wrote letters. I mean, I think any of us that had grandparents that were away at World War II, it was how they communicated. And in fact, on both sides and my grandmother, Jenna and Harold, whom nobody knows from Midland, Texas, their letters got lost. Um, Harold's Harold's letters were he, we had Harold's letters that my grandmother kept, but all of her letters got lost. And so we don't have that. We don't have their, their letters of love during the war. Although we do have this beautiful picture of my grandmother, Jenna, in a bathtub, um, you know, posing in a slightly provocative way as that she got her roommate took so that she could send it to him during war, World War II. But those, that's how our grandparents communicated my the love letters between my grandfather and grandmother George and Barbara are the most beautiful and probably the most cherished item that we have because they are letters of devotion and love before um you know and they were really young my grandpa was was just out of high school when he was a <laughs> naval aviator in world war ii but that's how we communicated as a family and they continued to write letters to us and in fact my grandmother wrote up until really she died i received a letter from her just a couple weeks before she passed away and why I think it's so important is one, you're telling people that you love them in written form for them to always have. Yeah. And, and so now I have these letters that are precious gifts. And I know it's a form of, you know, that could be on, on a way to extinction. And I hope it's not, you know, I write letters to my girls, some of which are really just diary entries about, the stage of life that we're in, you know, they're for me as much as they are for them, but I hope that it's something that they will look back on, you know, when they're my age and having girls of our kids of their own and think like, Oh my gosh, that's how much she cared. You know, yeah. that's her devotion. And they, and we can read about the moments, uh, particular snapshots of time that they were in. So I just think it's, it's for me, those, pieces of paper with their handwriting. I mean, I know what my grandparents' handwriting looks like. I remember it. It's in, if I close my eyes right now, I can think of how they signed Ganny and Gampy. And that to me is precious. That is so beautiful. Well, I really appreciate you sitting with us today. And it reminds me actually of a story in the book that your Ganny, um, which was Barbara Bush, um, for those that don't know the name Ganny, uh, when she really encouraged you about taking the interview, always taking the meeting. Mm -hmm. And so I just appreciate you sitting with us today. Who knows what's going to come of this yeah. time and what listener needed to hear from you today. Um, yeah. Um, and you know, it's so funny because she, what I realized when you were talking about your grandparents, what I realized now, I mean, not even when I was writing this book is how, truly fortunate I was to have my grandparents for so long yes. uh, and that I ended up having all these many relationships with particularly my dad's parents because they both lived until I was in my mid thirties. And so I had all these iterations of relationships with them. They saw me and I saw them as a little girl that they read to that they 
reprimanded, that they, you know, um, had had these little moments that I lit the Christmas tree at the National Mall with my grandmother and our sweatshirts with Christmas balls on it. You know, we had the childhood memories. And then later as a teen, you know, more reprimanding. And then they got to see me walk down the aisle. They read at my wedding. We, they saw who I married. They loved who I married. Aww. Then they saw me become a parent and my girls know great gampy and great ganny and i don't think it took me until talking about this book with so many people who said you know i never knew my grandparents mm -hmm. and that really and no matter what if you knew them or you didn't there is this relationship even with the people you never knew because they are so much part of your family of the fabric of your family today and so i just don't even know if i appreciated how significant they were in my life. Well, and I feel like that that is an encouragement in reading this book, whether you knew your grandparents or whether you didn't, these stories are going to bless you. Mm -hmm. um, and I appreciate you saying that they are a part of our fabric of our family, mm -hmm. whether you knew them or whether you didn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, but you do have some special, special moments, just tender moments that you share. Um, even I, I loved the story of when you were considering taking that job, which we're all so glad you did at the Today yeah. Show. Um, and your grand, your grandfather sitting down with you to watch an episode that day. And then mm -hmm. not only doing that, but going to the movies with you that oh, same yeah. day. <laughs> yeah, well, this is like actually sort of a PSA, which is do not see inappropriate films with your grandparents or your children. Really any, I mean, that kind of seventh grade person that's watching, you know, like a sex scene with your parents comes back, even in your thirties, you're like, why are we doing this? But yeah, I, um, I was a teacher and I loved teaching and I got the opportunity to come work at the Today Show. And I said, you know what? No, I'm going to continue teaching. And I went with my, to visit my grandparents and I told them, you know, I got it. This, this executive producer keeps emailing and calling and seeing if it was something I would do. And I, you know, I love to teach. And, and the truth is, and I think we all know this now more than ever, teaching is extremely difficult, particularly in marginalized areas. I was teaching in West Baltimore and we went through several principles in a year and I was exhausted. And so my, my husband was like, well, you know, think about taking the job. To, uh, the interview what's the worst that can happen and I went to see my grandparents and my grandmother was like you always take the interview you know you try it and I think it's interesting because people I think see her as a throwback as a woman who would maybe not encourage her granddaughter to work but she did she was such a force in our life and I'm not sure that was the exact you know, maybe it was because of speeches she gave or words she said that people see her that way. Maybe it's because of the way she looked, but really she was a modern woman. And um, so she said, always take the interview. And then my grandfather said, well, now have you seen the show? And I said, well, no, I'm a teacher. I get to school at 7 a.m. before the show's even started. So he said, well, let's turn it on. And this was six in the morning. They got up early. I get up early. We turned on the TV and we watched the show together. And in one of the segments, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen, who was playing Borat, was on. And he was so hilarious. And the G factor of the Today Show, the PG factor, was a movie we were dying to see because he was mm -hmm. funny and it was clever and hilarious. But if you remember Borat, yeah. it actually is quite naughty yes yeah. very naughty and it yes. was a beautiful main day a day we would never go to the movies you know we wouldn't waste it indoors but we were laughing so hysterically that we said let's go to the movies and then about halfway through and i'm not sure i i can't repeat some of the things that happened on this podcast but if you remember it was quite provocative and so my grand grandfather my gentleman grandfather and i were sitting there like what do we do, do we go <laughs> this day what did we do um but he had a great sense of humor and we waited it out i'm sure the secret service were like what are these people doing? <laughs> okay well you'll appreciate this jenna being 38 i had a similar major faux pas with my dad in 1998 we went to see there's something about mary in the movie oh my gosh and i love cameron diaz but yes. nobody told me this is yes. not a movie you go to your dad go with to your dad 
oh, oh my gosh. gosh hilarious yeah so yeah friends <laughs> let's help each other when we're yes. when we're <laughs> we need in the keys. yes let's we share recommendations Do not see something i mean um 50 shades of gray with your parents <laughs> i'll just put it out there i haven't done it but i would say don't watch don't. any of that trilogy <laughs> with your family yes well this book is full of um both funny and you're gonna have tears for sure mm -hmm. um but i swear i think we would be fast friends with the bush girls i'm convinced laura beth because there's just so many parts that i saw us i laughed so hard that you um you guys gave these personal like these um stories to your cats Oh yeah. Human person. Well, we basically personified our cats. Cats aren't humans, but we, our cats are. And my cat Bernadette is like a 90 year old, um, from somewhere, I think Jersey, I'm not exactly sure, but she's been smoking her whole life and she's got a really kind of raspy, that's Bernadette. And then Bob, my cat, my mom's cat is an artist. He loves glitter. He likes to decorate things and feathers and he really does he loves feathers but yeah barbara and i i don't know why i mean we were we we're kind of strange cat people my mother loved cats and her first cat was named dewey after the dewey decimal system and Perfect. then we all <laughs> we all followed suit and um yeah that's very strange i actually heard my daughter in a guitar lesson yesterday writing a song about bernadette and bob our mm -hmm. two families cats right now and i'm like yeah the it continues passing it on the weird <laughs> cat ladiness on to our kids just like well, it made me so it made me laugh so hard and i have to tell you i agree with your mom in that you can tell the gentleness of a cat if they'll yes. let you like a baby yeah, hold it like a baby and bob her cat was a barn cat that jumped into her arms like a baby and just held there and that's how she decided to adopt him I've only had one that let me do that, but you'll appreciate this. I had the cat. She lived almost 24 years. Wow. And I named her Vetter after Eddie Vetter. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> I love that. Well, Jim, he would be no. thrilled. That's well, right. Well, why, I guess, I, you know, I'm kind of curious. Obviously, you had this experience over this one year time span of losing some of these significant people in your life, Jenna. Um, but why did you feel you wanted to write everything beautiful in its mm -hmm. time right now? Well, I think, I mean, I wrote it a year, a year ago now, but I think the reason why I wrote it is I really started writing for myself. I wrote the first letter in there th that I wrote on the night my grand, when my grandmother Barbara died, I was all alone. My family, uh, my husband Henry was in Texas. My sister was in Texas. Uh, my parents were obviously in Texas. And so I got the news and I put my girls to bed and then I turned on the TV and it was filled with in memoriams. You know, when you lose somebody that's a public figure, you're grieving publicly, uh, which is, you know, of course, our Ganny taught us how to do. But at first, some of those comments felt really raw because, of course, they were really talking about Barbara Bush as the politician's wife not as Organi, not as a human being, not as somebody who we knew so intimately. And so I, after a while, just compulsively watching the television and flipping from channel to channel, I turned it off and I started to write my own letter to her, one that of course she would never read. And I think anybody that's processing grief, writing is a beautiful way to do that. And, and not, and I, by the way, I wrote for myself. I didn't think this would be published. I'm not sure when I thought, oh, this should, should be more. Um, because really it was journal entries and writing about, about losing my grandfather. And I think, you know, at some point what I realized, and this is why the title is obviously from the Bible, Ecclesiastes, uh, everything beautiful in its time. And what I realized is that even grief, even heartache, even losing people that you love so much that have been these transformational figures in your life can be beautiful because, and, but you have to obviously get over the hurt. Sure. And so, you know, I, the, I read that, I read Ecclesiastes at my grandmother Jenna's funeral and I was like, mm, yeah, that's it. Like everything is made beautiful in time and that patience and love and grace all come. And so um, I don't remember the moment where I was like, oh, let's publish this. Mm -hmm. But I really wrote for myself first. Yeah. Yeah. That is very healing. 
very mm -hmm. healing. That's exactly what I was thinking. And my, you know, I was going to ask you, but it sounds like you've just answered it about, you know, since facing so much loss and honestly, our culture really has a lot of fear around death um, and um, losing loved ones and just um, for ourselves. And so um, it sounds like your, your healing provision was doing some writings and that, yeah. that helped you through that grief process. Well, I am curious. Um, I loved in the book how you included the rules at the back door mm -hmm. and even your, your Gampy's rules of living as well. Do you feel like our generation has sage advice that we're passing on? And are there any particular rules that you think need to go by your back door? Well, yeah. I mean, I think anything that's come before, you know, we continue the things that, you know, and then the things that we didn't feel like worked, you know, we're, we're not continuing. I mean, of course, I feel like we're creating all of us, you know, Hoda and I talk a lot about how you can't really control what happens to your kids outside the walls of your home, right? You can't know what's going to happen to them on the bus ride or what's going they're going to face when they get to school. Or, I mean, I guess now a lot of people aren't even going to school, but in general, we can't control our kids' interactions, but we can control how they feel in the home. And mm -hmm. although I do have many memories of my grandparents, which I write about in this book, what I remember most is the feeling of being with them. Mm -hmm. I remember sitting at that oval, oval blue, baby blue table and in Maine with my grandparents, you know, next to each other, them holding each other's hands, the laughter mm -hmm. and the way a big family, the noise of a big family. Like I remember the joy of that. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, it's really in some ways up to us as parents mm -hmm. to create that atmosphere where people can feel safe and, and be joyful. And I know for a fact, you know, I don't know if I always do a perfect job and I'm sure they would say that they didn't always do a perfect <laughs> job too. But the overall feeling of being in both of my grandparents' house were, were ones of joy of feeling safe and comforted. And actually my grandpa Harold had the best catchphrase. It, when we were staying in Midland and really Jenna and Harold uh, from Midland, Texas, West Texas were really more a part of our day to day. We saw them a lot because we lived in Midland until we were five. And then, you know, we spent so much time with them. And so I think what he would do was such a gift. If any of us, if Barbara and, or I spilt milk or, you know, dropped our plate on the ground or got things messy, which kids will do. Um, he would yell, happy days. And I love that because what it did in two words was to, to let us all know that this was going to be an environment where we weren't going to sweat the small stuff. Mm -hmm. That like spilling and making a mess and being a kid was okay. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, I think, I think really, and I, you know, I don't know, but I've thought about this a lot, that both of my grandfathers were in World War II. Both of them, my grandfather, Harold, liberated a concentration camp, and Barbara and I found the pictures of these bodies on top of bodies. And I think that generation was like, we're not going to waste time. We've mm -hmm. seen horrific horrors. We've seen the worst of humanity. So little things like spilling milk aren't going to be the things that we get worried about. Yeah. So for me, I mean, and these aren't rules necessarily, but this is like a mantra or a feeling. And I yeah. think that's almost as important as rules, but the atmosphere in my house, I hope, and I'm working towards this. It, it isn't always for sure. Um, and it really depends about day by day because we're tired. And I think particularly mm -hmm. right now, all of us have been at home with the same people. We're exhausted. We're working from home. We're making meals. We're doing all of these things that exhaust us. And when we're exhausted, or at least I know when I'm exhausted, I'm not my best self. Yeah. Um, but what I want and what the exact, you know, what I'm striving for every single day is to create a day, a house with, mm -hmm. you know, full of joy, a house where kids can be kids, where there's laughter yeah. and love. And so, yeah, I mean, that's what I think all of us strive to do, but particularly, you know, I, I am at work on it every single day. Mm, yeah. Well, just even listening to you talk, I'm, I'm just remembering page after page of stories. And I, I can wholeheartedly tell our listeners that you will be blessed by this book. Your children yeah. will be blessed by this book. Elders in your family will be blessed by this book. And I saw today 
is a hundred days till Christmas. Yes. It's time y'all go ahead (laughs) and start getting the Christmas gifts list. And this, this should be on it. Um, Jenna, we, as you know, we're a Southern podcast, so we can't let you go without asking you a few Southern questions as a Texas girl. Um, so Lainey, you want to kick us off with a couple of, I I was just curious when you, when your dad was at the white house, did you, did, did they ever do Southern cooking in the white house? Yeah, of course. But, but particularly, and listen, I'm a proud Texan Tex-Mex. We had, we had their Mm Tex-Mex. I will never forget how delicious the Tex-Mex was, but yeah, fried chicken and biscuits. And I mean, definitely there was a combination of food, but yeah, Southern food was in the mix for sure. What is one place that you want people to know about? Um, maybe in Midland in Texas or yeah. something well, in the West, South? West Texas, if y'all have not been there, is so beautiful. And I, when, when my husband and I were dating, we did a road trip from Midland, Texas. We flew into Midland and we drove all the way to Portland, Oregon. But our time driving from Midland through West Texas, through Marfa um, and Pecos and all of these adorable little towns was El Paso where my grandmother's from was really beautiful. So if you can get out to West Texas, uh, the Gage Hotel is this incredible place. Marfa is so wonderful. There's so much art and history. Um, the, uh, the, the film giant, the old Western was filmed in Marfa. There's an old El Pasayo, the old hotel. You can, we stayed in it. We also camped out big Bend national park. Mm. It's just beautiful and like nothing you've ever seen. So we, I think the time in West Texas was growing up was really instrumental for how, who we are and how, how we are, mm-hmm. but, but um, it's never too late to visit it there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's good. Is there any place you can get good Southern food in New York city? Oh, of course. My new thing, by the way, um, is to order food from South Carolina. I, um, just had um, some delicious barbecue from Lawrence's barbecue and then Callie's biscuits. And you can just yes. order it. It comes to you. They do a tail. We ate such great meat over Labor Day. Callie's biscuits, their pimento cheese is incredible. Um, Caroline's cakes. There's also this incredible pie maker called, I think the Southern pie lady. There's all these great places. And for Henry and I, not only are we hoping to support our local restaurants in New York City, but also support all these local businesses because they need it, you know? Yeah. And and also we want nostalgia right now, or I do, I'm craving it. And there's no better way than to eat the food that you grew up on. Yes, yes. Those are awesome recommendations. I'm going to look into a lot of those. Please do. Um okay. Well, for those of you that are just dying to get the book and feeling lucky, I want to let you know that we are doing a book giveaway this oh, cool. week on our Instagram. So at Steel Magnolias Podcast, you'll see the giveaway. And this is fun. We asked our friends at Rifle Paper Company to also oh, I love give them. away. Yes, to also they're giving away a stationery set for us to encourage letter writing. Yeah, they so, did my first Christmas card with him, uh, when I was pregnant with Mila. They did a little cartoon of. Henry and I together and like a little baby. It was also our baby announcement. Mila was born in April and, and our Christmas card was our little baby announcement. That we awesome. were gonna have a well, they, they have a gorgeous card set and stationary set and pen and just, it's beautiful. So we'll put that with the book for a lucky winner on our Instagram this week. So Lainey, why don't you take us out with our sign off? Jenna, peace be with you. And also with y'all. Thank you so much for having me.